let us start the a new chapter, uh, this is chapter 9 and this is a very exciting chapter uh, because this is something that has been happening since last 5-6 years uh, in the post uh, deep learning right the advent of deep learning in 2015-2016 this trend has started. Now this is on graph representation learning a very exciting chapter I am not sure how much I can I can uh, explain because this is a separate separate course altogether and this really requires a, a significant background on deep learning machine learning etc. Uh, so the T of this course Shivani has given you know uh, some ideas at least you know basic ideas about graphs, uh, graph, I mean the, the, the deep learning right, uh, GNN uh, sorry <laughs> CNN, RNN right, attention. So hopefully uh, you know I, I, I will try to give you a very high level overview of this, I will also point you to some of the important materials right, uh, if you really want to know graph representation learning well. But this is this is something which is a state of the art these days. So, well, so since this course is for uh, students who don't have any background, may not have any background for, uh, I mean, may not have any background on machine learning. So let me briefly discuss what a machine learning pipelines uh, uh, basically mean, right? A standard machine learning machine learning pipeline, uh, you know, constitute of this um, uh, modules. So, uh, data pre-processing pre you are given uh, data either in terms of images, text or uh, time series data and so on. You process the data, then you extract features from the data, then you design some model, you train the model, test the model, right, you fine tune the model and then you use this model for prediction, okay. So, data preparation, collecting and annotating data according to the requirement, uh, data pre-processing, collected data is often noisy and unstructured, mandatory cleaning is needed, feature extraction, you extract features, uh, manually extracted, uh, uh, you manually extract features, handcrafted features, right, based on your intuition, your hypothesis and so on. And then uh, if you have domain specific knowledge then that would be great that would help you identify appropriate features and then you use uh, learning algorithms, ML algorithms may be supervised or unsupervised, semi supervised for predicting labels, okay. So feature extraction is the pain, why? Because you really need to know the, the domain properly. Say for example you are working on fraud detection, right. For a naive user, for a naive researcher, uh, right, if, if he or she does not have any idea about the domain, past experience, you will not be able to understand what types of features people generally talk about, people generally consider, right. In case of text, say, uh, uh, I mean in, in NLP, natural language processing, you have a sentence, right, and say the task is to predict the sentiment or de determine the sentiment of the sentence. So, you um, you can identify manually identify some words which are which basically indicate positive sentiments right say uh, extremely good or marvelous right whereas you, you can also come up with a vocabulary of negative words for example awful, awful or say bad or this kind of words right. And then you can also right you can also uh, use engram kind of features right uh, con consecutive words to uh, consecutive two words consecutive three words part of speech and so on and so forth so but you may not exactly know that what kind of features are required for this task the task is sentiment analysis right so uh, so, so so this is basically a problem right this is really a problem sentiment analysis is a very simple task if you think of complicated task uh, for we say, say for example legal document classification right you really need to know the legal aspect right uh, and, and depending on that you may be able to identify how what kind of you know uh, vocabulary what kind of tokens uh, types are used in a legal document right how words are uh, distributed how words form a sentence and so on and so forth. So 
So given an image, uh, say, say let, let's, let's think of an image classification problem, right? What you do, say, given an image of, say, dog and cat, right? You can extract features like coordinates of ears, right? Number of, uh, you know, whiskers in cats, right? Uh, shape of eyes and so on. Now, these are something that you manually identify, okay? I mean, manually, I mean, what do you mean by manually identify? You basically manually determine that these set of features need to be extracted and depending on that, you uh, come up with your algorithms to extract it. So, what are the challenges of feature extraction? Manual feature extraction. So, given a situation, there are large number of possible features right that you can extract how should one choose which features to select right should should she take all the features from the pool should she take only few out of them right how to make a decision in such a situation is it possible to encapsulate the feature extraction process with a learning algorithm right what happens if we replace this uh, manually uh, handcrafted feature extraction process by an automation automated engine. So, that automated engine will automatically extract features, it automatically identifies important features and let the classifier do the task, the end task, right. So, this is the task of representation learning. Uh, you basically, you, you feed image, you feed text, you feed time series data, you feed any unstructured data and your uh, representation learning model uh, produces uh, features automatically and those features are being fed to the learning models, uh, the classification models in task for prediction. Okay. So, if you think of text again, text is my favorite that is why I am always giving example of text. right? So, let us say uh, the, cat, the, the, the cat sat on the, on the mat, right. So, you can tokenize words, you can tokenize the sentence into words, right, the cat sat, etc. And then for each word, you can come up with a vector, right. This vector can be one hot encoding, right, or the vector can be, uh, can be taken from a predefined uh, vector representation right and then you essentially uh, come up with a concatenated version of these vectors which represent the sentence you feed it to the task and the task uh, the, 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 the basically the model behind the task runs takes into account this one and predicts uh, the this one so representations are generally task dependent okay but we will also talk about representations which are task, uh, task independent. So, the major problem or the major issue is that how do we come up with similarity, similarity between entities while doing representation, while um, you know uh, coming up with a better representation. So, now similarity can you, you, you basically want that uh, based on some sort of notions of similarity of products, you can, uh, you can have representations, right. For example, uh, you see here, uh, this is basically uh, different tools and uh, these are representations. So, this is an embedding space and these are representations and these entities are arranged in an increasing hill height, right, hill of the zoo. Right. You see that um, these items are grouped here, these items are grouped here and so on and so forth. Right. So, when it comes to uh, similarity, right, think of items, right. Say for example, uh, you, you, you have um, a shoe and a cloth, right. These two items are similar in terms of color right you have a sports shoe and a cloth these two items are similar in terms of occasion you have two shoes these are similar in terms of some categories right so how do we come up with 
exact similarity measures to to understand the the similarity or pro proximity between a pair of items right so in graph representation learning the idea is that you are given a graph and you map the graph meaning that the nodes or the entities the edges of the graph to an embedding space right so that the proximity between a pair of nodes in the graph is preserved on the embedding space right so we'll try to formalize this notion in in the later part of this slide so what is the purpose of a graph representation learning the purpose is that from a graph like this we basically map all the nodes to an uh, embedding space such that nodes which are closer uh, in the graph uh, their corresponding embeddings also come closer in the embedding space so let's say uh, this is so say this is vertex 5 vertex 1 so the similarity the similarity of vertex 5 vertex 1 should be captured and let's say this is the embedding of vertex 5 z5 and this is say z1 embedding of vertex 1 this should be uh, similar to the dot product of um, uh, the embeddings of vertex 1 and vertex 5 right so we uh, i mean so here several questions can be arise for example how do we capture the similarity between two nodes in a graph right it can be a simple distance shortest path distance between two nodes it can be uh, it can be number of uh, number of similar number of common neighbors we can use jacquard similarity something like that and uh, on the embedding space how do we measure the similarity between two embeddings we can take normal dot product or we can also think of uh, other types of similarity measures between two uh, vectors right so here the question is how to map different components of a graph now in this example i basically mentioned that how can we map a node to an embedding space but it can be an edge it can be a subgraph community and so on embeddings of similar types of nodes uh, should come closer embeddings of dissimilar nodes move away from each other so it is also it should also preserve the case that vertex 8 and say vertex 5 right since they are far apart their their similarity is should be less and their dot product should also be uh, right uh, basically different right so so this is the idea right so uh, we need to capture the similarity of a pair of entities say pair of nodes in the uh, uh, original graph uh, to the embedding space so that the such notion of similarity can uh, can be captured in, in a in an appropriate manner so what's the challenge the major challenge is if we look at the literature right uh, embedding method i think um, uh, it had it had started mostly in the area of computer vision then language then graph right the problem in graph is that you know graph doesn't have any sequence right for example if we think of a graph like this 1 2 3 4 and you have an adjacency matrix right 4 cross 4 4 cross 4 right now if we rename the vertices say say let's say now i call this as 2 this as 1 this as 4 this as 3 the graph structure will remain same but the adjacency matrix will change right but think of a think of an image right image is represented by this uh, this this pixel matrix right um, rgb matrix for example now if we change pixel values right the image will change completely so the unique pixel corresponds to an unique image but here as you see if you change the adjacency matrix this is this is essentially uh, reordering the vertex uh, vertex ids right uh, but that would not change the topological structure so therefore graph representation itself is very tough 
because there is no uniqueness about the node how do we how do we call that okay this is a unique node how do we capture the uniqueness of a node right we can't capture it using using simple vertex id the vertex id can be changed right but if you think of say um, a language right say i am a boy i am a boy in the sentence uh, if we change the relative order of words right the sentence the meaning of the sentence will change completely so here the sequence matters a lot but in case of graph there is no sequence as such in case of image there is a particular ordering right if we change the order the image will change but in case of graph there is no sequence as such so if you rename nodes and edges in a graph it will it will basically change the um, it will not change the topological structure of a graph so therefore graphs do not have any any um, uh, any any uh, what should i say any unique way of representation right therefore it is complex it is a complex data structure itself therefore roughly we roughly define the problem of learning vector representations of various components of a graph as graph representation learning okay we will discuss so 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 since this is the problem right we do not know how to represent a node even right appropriately uniquely we'll see how we address these problems in the later part right so when we say that um, we are embedding a graph uh, to an embedding space we are essentially talking about either either embedding a node either embedding edges or even embedding entire graph it may be possible that an entire graph is embedded to an embedding space right by a simple single vector even we can also think of embedding subgraph a community and so on and so forth so as i mentioned there are two major perspectives how do we capture the similarity between nodes in a graph right we can use either euclidean distance or say cosine similarity or any other uh, matrices uh, uh, to capture the similarity uh, of uh, you know uh, node representations in an embedding space in case of graph you can use say uh, sorted for distance or um, neighborhood similarity or two hop neighbor similarity and so on and so forth so let's say uh, you have a graph like this okay u and v right so in this case u and v are directly connected therefore you can say that okay they are similar because the shortest part distance is one in case of but if you see the neighbors right u's neighbors are arranged in a different manner right it basically looks like a star whereas v's neighbor are basically form a clique right so their neighborhood structures are different uh, but they are directly connected so if you just take the shortest part distance then u and v are similar but if you take the neighborhood similarity they may not be similar now let's look at here in this case u and v their shortest part distance is 2 right higher than this one but if you see the neighbors all their neighbors are common right so one may say that okay u and v are more similar in this case compared to this case right think of another cases another example let's say like this u and v they have they are far u and v do not have any common neighbors but if you look at the neighborhood structure arrangement both of them have kind of star like arrangement of their neighbors so in in the structural if you look at the neighborhood uh, structure in that uh, aspect i think u and v would be similar so essentially what i'm trying to say is that u and v i mean when you take i mean when you consider measuring similarity between a pair of nodes in a graph it is difficult it is very difficult to capture the similarity right sometimes say we use uh, shortest part distance sometimes we use neighborhood similarity some sometimes we, we use the distribution of neighbors right and so on and so forth so 
this is the overall pipeline of the graph representation learning uh, in general if we do not use graph uh, graph representation learning technique uh, we are given a graph we use manual feature extraction and then we use some model in the downstream task the downstream task can be say node classification right or say link prediction and so on and so forth right but if we have if we incorporate graph representation learning grl this part is now replaced by this one and this module will automatically extract features and those features will be then fed to the next model for the final prediction right so this remember this model and this model they are different here basically essentially this model is grl right and this model is basically the model that we use for uh, the downstream task this can be a simple support vector machine or a logistic regression and so on and so forth so what is the input to a grl so the input would be either an uh, homogeneous graph or an heterogeneous graph or if you have more information about the nodes it can be auxiliary information like the node feature or node feature and the output would be uh, either node embedding or edge embedding or graph embedding in fact hybrid embedding you can embed uh, a node and a subgraph and so on and so forth in a hierarchical manner on the same embedding space that is also possible so we stop here in the next lecture we start discussing about the actual algorithms for graph representation learning thank you mm -hmm.